it's just it's just a tough deal, man. It really is. It's a tough deal. Yeah, so he to me, this kind of ties into the the topic as far as betrayal, because like I mentioned, when it comes to betrayal, it kind of goes beyond just between a man and a woman, and you may just talk about infidelity, and that's a form of betrayal. And normally the the narrative is kind of limited to that, but there's also betrayal, not just from a man to a woman, but there's intra gender betrayal. And I would consider Umar something of a internal traitor or internal, he's committing treason to his manhood by yeah. kind of being the spokesman for the wayward behavior of these women. And I'm starting to believe that this guy is compromised in that he's a Trojan horse presenting himself as this pro-black well, he's a well yeah he is you know he's he's uh he's not just a pan-african <laughs> he's not just pan-african he's he, he pander africanist <laughs> pander african yeah. and right. he pretty much to me he's like this trojan horse that is working for the interest of women who have made all these bad decisions and he's trying to kind of on the back end get men to become these simps that are these cleanup men that are going to bail them out. And he's kind of, whether he's doing it by, because it's at his core beliefs or he's yeah. the rep or he's representing the interests of them, because I would imagine that most of his following are women and typically that's kind of who he's pandering to. And if you look back on some of the, scandals that he's been involved with and they're they've all had to do with his uh very lascivious behavior with, with whether it's with these uh strippers or some other form of uh backsliding that he's uh, done so it's it's nothing for him to kind of be compromised and to be in this simp mode where he's just throwing men under the bus in favor of these wayward women and yeah. i think that's the highest form of treason and based on the topic that we're having in terms of being a traitor, I think that he exemplifies that because no man should take that position. I mean, if you're a man, why would you go against your rational self-interest and to help undermine things that could help you? Because he, yeah. at least ostensibly as a man, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> he, he, he's a male, but I, I don't respect men that, that take that position. You know, I used to rock with yeah. a few things that he would say here and there, but he's, he's becoming more of a, he's being exposed as, as a big part of the problem and people like him with this, yeah. um, this, this deification of women and all of their fuckery and trying to make it as if it's acceptable. And I think that people like him have to be shouted down. And you got, you even got males defending him. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It, he's he's becoming this Trojan horse where all these other guys can kind of rally behind and these females that are part of the problem as well, they can kind of hide behind his rhetoric and all of their messed up decisions, they get to kind of wrap it in, in that rhetoric and he can kind of intellectualize it and say all these buzzwords and you know, because he is a very good speaker. Salad. Yeah, it's a words lot of word salad, but he's he's a good. <laughs> he knows how to mix it up pretty good. You know, he's he's pretty good yeah. with 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 all of that. So you know, a lot of Negroes are enamored with people being able to piece sentences together well. So by him be, being able to do that, then that helps to undermine a lot of the interests of men in favor of these women with these bad behaviors. But what I'm going to do here, we're going to get into a clip. And we're going to, to dissect some of what he's saying. And by the way, I'm the one that brought that word dissect to the lexicon. <laughs> A lot of people are starting to use it, but. Yeah, I, I, I did. I like it. Yeah, but I remember <laughs> when I first used it, and actually it was on Brother Obsidian's show. And then after that, I started hearing everybody use it. But I, I can forensically go back and and I keep notes of when I say something. And again, I don't mind. I know we all learn from each other, 
But it's like some of the other brothers say, like, you know, Tommy Sotomayor or Black Ram, they will always talk about how people take their words and don't give credit to it. It ain't mm -hmm. until you start being a producer and putting stuff out here that you realize that they're telling the truth about that and how, how it is that you can say something and everybody starts saying it, then people forget where it came from. But of yeah. course, I didn't invent the word dissect, but I was the first one that used it within this context as far as right. dissect, dissecting someone's argument. There's some other stuff, mm -hmm. too, that I, you know, I, I got forensic evidence <laughs> of uh, things yeah. that I brought, brought into the lexicon. But that's a subject for another video. But what I want to do, <laughs> we're going to get into this particular clip, and I want us to kind of just pay attention to what he's saying. And I'm going to let it play a little bit, and I'm probably going to pause it so we can kind of really dissect some of these uh, talking points that he has here. So let's uh, share the screen. Give me one moment. Speaking of that, um, you know, I've seen a video of, your, of yours where you said that feminism has conditioned black women to view black men as the enemy. Um, it has. Feminism was financed by the CIA. Uh, Gloria, what was her name? Gloria Steinem, I think she was. Right, yeah. Mother of modern feminism because uh, traditional feminism goes back to the 1800s, right? With Susan B. Anthony and those uh, white supremacists. But Glo Gloria Steinem was a CIA agent. They financed her. Her first feminist magazine they paid for. Mm. The CIA brought feminism into the white household to get the woman out the house and into the black household to turn a black woman against the black man. Yeah, one thing he, he didn't mention was the method that they used to put it into the black household was through a black woman by the name of Michelle Wallace, who Gloria Steinem was the ghostwriter for, and she created a book called Black Macho and the Myth of the Superwoman, where she was able to unleash some of the worst stereotypes about black men. That's where the first rhetoric you started hearing about black men ain't shit and all that. That came. Uh, okay. Yeah. It came through Gloria Steinem, who he's correct. She was an operative. But the black woman was the front woman. Her name was Michelle Wallace. And she was the one who was the face of uh, this, uh, this book. And I believe they had a magazine as well. And they would write some of the most egregious and diabolical stuff against black men. And mm -hmm. it was how the black women of that day, the feminist second wave of feminism, how they joined in on this. And they allowed themselves to be these meat puppets to produce this rhetoric. So he didn't go into nuts and bolts, but he mentioned it. But he it's funny how he and I'm sure he's intelligent enough to know what I just said, but no, yeah. He didn't want to get into the nuts and bolts about how they did it. They did the feminism didn't just spring up like a dandelion. It was there were actual black women that it took root with, and they were the ones. And I can name some of them, like Michelle uh, Wallace, who they were the ones who were propagating this stuff and putting mm -hmm. it in the black community. So it's funny how uh, he didn't go into detail about that. But anyway, yeah, and he knows it. To hmm. scapegoat us for problems caused for her by white supremacy. So, you know, obviously, you know, a big thing, obviously, we, we spoke about. Did he just snort like a warthog, but anyway. <laughs> uh, the, the gender wars are earlier. Um, obviously, there's a lot of conversation nowadays about, you know, the value of what a woman brings and the value of what a man brings in a relationship. And now there's a lot more rhetoric from our women that we hear is I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, right? So, that's just that, that's pain speaking, right? Because most black women know they will never get a man. A black woman can have sex whenever she wants, right? Because she's beautiful. She can have a bed mate, but to have a soul mate, she may never get. I have two daughters, 11 and 20, right? My oldest would be 21 this week. Statistically, right? There's a strong chance my daughter could be one of those. I hope she's not. She could be one of those who never get a husband because only one out of four gets a husband. You see that? So when a black woman says, I don't need a man, that is a reaction to the reality that I may not get a man. 
So why not preach? Because I, I understood, you know, you're, you're obviously against interracial relations when it comes to black Absolutely. men with black women. I mean, with white women. With all women. You should only be with the black woman. And you will say, well, if you can't find a good woman in America, there's well, like an absolute. So why not teach that same rhetoric to our women? Like, if you, I do. If you feel I like tell you... sisters all the time go to Africa. So I then... know sisters who marry. I just, I just uh, spoke with a sister. She invited me to the wedding. She just married a brother from the continent. So I guess he's a default passport, bro, I guess now, huh? <laughs> he confused. So, it's, but instead of saying they, they would never I'll get take married, I'll sisters to Africa who married brothers they met right. in Africa. Right. So, yeah, I think there's plenty. There's plenty. I think there's obviously plenty of black men. Yes, and black it is. Women. So and what I also tell black women, if you're going to go get you an African man from the continent, right. you would have to understand that the way in which you talk to black men in America mm-hmm. would not be tolerated over there. Mm-hmm. Now yes, look at the hypocrisy. They, they're going to call them yes. on it too. You see that open <laughs> hypocrisy, right? So if yeah. it's not tolerated over there, why would it be tolerated in America? Yeah, yeah. And they should be more obligated to the black men in America. So he's going to make a point about, well, they're part of the problem. I'm going to dissect that, but but look at that, though, right? So if it's yeah. not acceptable to, you know, when they cross over and get white men, it's not acceptable, or these other men, and it's not even acceptable when they go to other black men from different cultures, but somehow... Black men in America are supposed to be the uh, the the bag carriers for all this this garbage, right? You're supposed to be the garbage yeah. men carrying yeah. all that mess, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not even working out that long between uh, American black women and uh, foreign black men. You said what again? You know, hey, I, I hear that it's not even uh, uh, lasting too long their relationship. Between the uh, American black women and the foreign black man, I heard that he wasn't lasting too long. Well, it wouldn't last that long if they go there with the same attitude. So that's pretty, yeah. pretty understandable. And I hate when they try to use that statistic about how black women, white male relationships last longer than black yeah. men and white women relationships. Yeah. Not taking into account the fact that numerically there's a lot fewer of those unions and there's a lot less social pressure from those unions, particularly what they get from the society and other um, genders, like how much pressure is being put on a black man when he's with anything other than a black woman in America, as opposed to black women who give themselves Tupperware parties when they do it, not to mention it's how it's encouraged. And another part of it is just dealing with numbers. If you're dealing with, a smaller sample size, which, you know, black women and white male unions are very small compared to other unions. Look, it's just like if you took two, uh, 10 people and you compare them to a hundred people and let's say in two, in those, in that group of 10 people, two of them were millionaires. That mm-hmm. group could say, or oh, 20% of us are, are millionaires, right? Yeah. Cause there's two of them. But if you go with the group that's a hundred and is, um, they could have eight millionaires, right? right. And that's only that's only eight percent, right? But they have, a, but but in raw numbers, they got more millionaires, right? But you're comparing apples yep. and oranges because you're saying, oh, over here, well, we got twenty percent. Well, yeah, it's only ten of you guys. Over here, it's a hundred of us, but we still got eight millionaires. Yeah. So that's yeah. the type of game they play. They'll just take this smaller number between the white male and the black female and they'll say oh well because these marriages last longer yeah because there's only three of you guys so if, yeah. if one of you if one of those marriages lasted yeah that's 33 yeah. <laughs> percent that, that last yeah it's a very yeah. bad argument bad faith argument but anyway let, let's get a little bit more of this because we try to act like the way sisters treat us doesn't have a history that we are not at least partly responsible for let's be honest the black woman has had to hold down the black house by herself, although imperfectly, she's had to do it by herself since the mass incarceration of black males began in the 1970s. Okay, so that's some BS, but what do you say to that? Well, I mean, the government pretty much put the American black women you know, in charge of the household by being the breadwinner. So, I mean, it's like, you know, if they don't need a, a provider, you know, they would lean on the government, you know, for or the independency or, or what have you, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I just hate to, 
to to point the finger, but you know, but that was a that that was a huge huge problem taking taking the black man out of the home and 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 they was replacing us with pretty much government assistance. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's what, what pretty much happened to me. Well, let's deal with the first part of his argument because remember, it started. He started off by saying that that the way he they talked to black men in America would not yeah. be tolerated in Africa. And then the brother told him and said, well, it's not, it's not tolerated in America. That's what we've been trying to tell him. But then he, what Umar says to that is, well, you know, we have to understand that black, you're partially to blame. So he, he once again, he deflects from <laughs> the attitude that they have to say that, well, you, somehow you just got to take it. You got to grin and bear it because you're part yeah. of the problem. You're part of the reason that she has that attitude. So what, what do you say to that? Yeah, you know, they just blame us for everything, man. That that's that's just what it is. They just blame us for everything. They they blaming us for leaving. <laughs> so you know, and then it's just it's just a lot of it's just a lot of projection, just a lot of projection. And and I heard that you know African men they 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 are very strict, and they will they are known to put their hands on 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 their wives. So you know, no matter what race they are, so you know that's their house. But, yeah, yeah, but right. the, the the fundamental flaw in what he's saying is that he's taking some historic things that happen as if black men are not the victims of past decisions, whether it was through other black men or black women, particularly their mothers, who didn't choose the best men to have children with. In many cases, and this part is often overlooked, they don't even know who their father is. Look what happened between yeah. Afeni Shakur and Tupac's father. Yeah. Look at look look at that whole situation. How she lied to Tupac, talking about told him, and that's the, just it's a, a high high profile example. But this has happened hundreds of thousands, if not millions of times, where you've had women <laughs> who misled their children about who their actual father was. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, and poison their children against the father when the yeah. father's actually wanted a relationship, just like Tupac's father. And one of the things that was very touching when I looked at that story, Tupac's father didn't even want anything from him. He just wanted a relationship from him. He never asked him for no money yeah. or nothing. Meanwhile, Afeni, his mother, was trying to guard a uh, bulldog and guard all of Tupac's estate. And the reason why she denied Tupac a relationship with his father because she didn't want him to have any claim to his estate. She didn't want him to yeah. have any claim to the money. And she kept up with this lie as long as she could that he was dead, just so she can cut him out of the money. And that that's some evil stuff right there. But that's yeah, a lot. Of, but that's a lot of what these women do. But Umar and in his ilk, they don't account for those type of nuances. They just want to say, "Oh, well, she would just have to carry this burden." No, a lot of this was choice. They chose the men to get pregnant with that they chose to get pregnant by. In many cases, just like if you used to look at those old Maury Povic shows, they can't even yeah. pin, pin down who the baby father is between 10 dudes. Yeah, Line booing the guy baby. before he even, yeah, booing the guy before he even opened his mouth. Yeah, so that's how you, you know, this is all some bullshit because you, in many cases, you know, they want to frame it like it's always the man leaving when the man was never there because the woman, she didn't even know who impregnated her because she was being such a hoe that she couldn't narrow yeah. down who actually knocked her up. Yeah, it's sad but true, man. And in That's some cases, the guy might leave because he found out that the kid wasn't his. What about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's yeah. all some BS. But anyway, let's get a little bit more of this. Most of our children are raised by a single mother right now. Yes, and it's their choice. Yeah. Yeah. It has been that way for about 50 years. So when a sister says, I don't need a man, because she couldn't find one strong enough to hold her down. Oh, that's some BS right there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, uh, I have to push back on that, man. That's the now, what, what you got for, what you got for, for Umar? Yeah, because my, so, yeah, that, that that what he just said, man. That's that's the exact opposite of, of what I went through, man. And and uh, my child's mother, she's no longer with us. But you know, when my child was, I'll say about seven, nine months, you know, she pretty much uh, took the decision of the government assistance and and and, and pushed me out of the picture altogether. I couldn't see my child or anything, but 
Um, she had, you know, the, the, the whole state backing her up and everything. And I, I, feel, I just felt like I didn't have any rights as a father, you know what I mean? And it's millions and millions of us that, you know, that's been, that's been through that. And that's a shame, man. You know, we love our kids. Man. Yeah, and that's more the norm. That's like when the CDC put out that information, the CDC or Pew Research, one of them, about how black men are the most active fathers and how they just, you know, a lot of these women can't stand that because it, it goes against their yeah. BS narrative. But it's the truth. <laughs> Yes, it's true. the truth. And then you got this guy, like I said, according to, you know, in, in going commensurate to our theme with the show, he's betraying the image of black men by propagating this bullshit. And that's what I got a problem with him for. Yeah. How are you going to be so yeah, pro black, but you're anti black man because you're, you're propagating these same BS stereotypes when the data, he should be aware of this data. If people like us who can just be out here, and this isn't he this is what he does. This, he's supposed to be this uh this PhD professional doctor, whatever. How come he doesn't know these this stat, this data about black men being the most active fathers? How come I never heard him quote that stat? And if he has, it it, it would contradict what he's saying right now. Yeah. 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 He you knows know, it. it. Yeah. So it, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, it's a um it, it's a it's public. Uh, it's in, it's a character assassination. You know, he's he's just going out here, going against his own image as a black man, putting out this this narrative, which I'm sure he exonerates himself personally. But when he yeah. says stuff like this, and he's a baby daddy himself, he didn't marry none of the women that he impregnated. I'm not sure. I don't think I don't know if his two daughters have the same mother. But yeah. why don't he lead by example? Marcus, he's going to go on to talk about how black men ain't essentially uh, heading up these households. Why don't you lead by example? Why don't you show us how to do it, Umar? Why why don't we see you do it first? Yeah. Or when you meet a woman and you say, sister, I'm I'm strong enough to be a man. You ain't got to work or you ain't got to pay the bills or whatever. Pull back. I got you. And she can't do it because all the other men before you Mm -hmm. who disappointed her so what I'm saying is, black man, we got to be patient with our women because we created that personality. We... Oh, we created it. So I, it had nothing. It had to, yeah, but it, it had nothing. To, it had nothing to do with her choosing these men. It had nothing to do with her mother raising her to be that. You know what I mean? Women say that they got the way that they are from their mothers. How is yeah. it that? How is they literally say that? Chantel, yeah, Simone, my own sister. Yeah, my Chantel friend. Simone. Shout out to her. She says that all the time. She says that her mother's, her mother, I think her mother's passed on, RIP, but she was mentioning that's how she was raised, and it was her mother that taught her that. And it ain't just her. I've heard numerous women say that it was their mothers or grandmothers that taught them that. Yeah. So how does a black man got something to do with that? They were like that once before they even hit the market. So you can't even use the excuse that, oh, well, she was burned by so many men. Well, even if that was the case, then it's the choices that she's making. But you can't even use that because a lot of these women go into the game with that mentality because they got it from their mama. Yeah, they got it from their mama, yeah. So this is total bullshit what he's saying. Yeah. Created that, and then we want to act like we didn't play a role. We have to be held accountable for their poor selection. Exactly. He just said it right there. He said, so we got to be accountable for their poor selection. (laughs) Oh, that's BS right there. <laughs> because <laughs> if you're doing what you're supposed to do as a man, you're, you're responsible for that. You're not responsible for what Pookie, Ray Ray, all mm-hmm. these other guys that they're choosing. You ain't responsible for nothing that those guys are doing. All this collectivism where you, it's a big pool and everybody just community pool and you show up and it's a bunch of piss and crap in the pool already. Look, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm taking no. my child. I'm going out to a cleaner pool. Don't, right. be trying to tell me, don't be telling me to clean up that pool. No, them mm, Negroes, nah. they were there before me. They the ones peed in the pool. I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. So don't real. be telling me yeah. I'm responsible for that. I'm going I'm to nah. go to a cleaner pool. Right, right. I agree. You want everybody <laughs> to clean up somebody else's piss in the pool. No, nah, bro. We ain't doing that. Yeah. But we ain't doing it. But yet you got this ridiculous pandering 
uh, Prince of Pan Pizza, fat, sloppy, <laughs> degenerate Umar talking about you supposed to build with something like that. You supposed to uh, uh, take all the blame when she, when they when you got them snake women out there like that. They'll get yeah. a man set up and then try to tarnish his name like that. Yeah, that's, that's sad, man. Yeah. yeah, but this is what I say to Umar and all the rest of them. We we ain't gonna be able to do it. It it just ain't happening. Nah. We, ain't, we ain't taking on no responsibility for their bad decisions. Nope. We making moves. We doing what we gotta do, but we ain't gonna be able to do it. That that's that's nah. our new thing. That's our new thing. Check it out. Nah, baby, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I tried to take you serious before, and you know it. You figured you would slick this and me pull up next man, but when you heard he had a wife, it ruined your plan. <laughs> Old school. Exactly. We, ain't gonna be, we ain't gonna be able to do it. We got a part two. Check it out. Take again in a lifetime, you hook up. No way, no how your history. So let's keep it real, cause this ain't no mystery. You had it like a queen living lovely and lost. Your props had an all time low in your country. I used to treat you good, take you shopping and feed you. But now I'm doing fine, a girlfriend, I don't need you. For you to even ask me that you must be stupid now, nah, baby. I'm not gonna be able to do it. Can you do it? I'm not gonna be able to do it. Can you do it? I'm not gonna be able to Be able yeah, to do it. One hundred. <laughs> Period. Real. I ain't raising Straight your up. kids. I'm not gonna be able to do it. No, no, nah. no. No hard feelings. I'm just not gonna be able to do it. 